select properties uh, IP addresses tab there are a series of uh, IP numbers there and their settings instead of dealing uh, one by one I'm scrolling uh, to bottom there we have IP all uh, in IP all you would see TCP the dynamic ports have a value of zero by default that means use the uh, TCP dynamic ports uh, but if we use dynamic ports uh, the next time a SQL server is restarted due to a reboot or something like that uh, the assigned port number might, might have changed the default port number is 1433 but uh, there is no guarantee that it would be the same uh, when you boot the next time for this reason we are not going to use dynamic ports instead specify a, a specific port uh, we wouldn't use uh, the default 1433 although we could do instead I will choose something like 65,000 for the port number okay uh, we are getting the same warning that we need to restart the server okay since we are done let's re restart this now when it restarts all SQL server would be listening on port 65000 okay it is okay we have done with this one uh, before we continue I will show a slight difference uh, in the SQL Server 2005 edition uh, under SQL Server uh, 2008 configuration tools you don't see a surface area configuration okay uh, surface area configuration only exists uh, SQL Server 2005 instead of uh, surface area configuration you open management studio connect to your instance uh, in this case our instance is SQL Express connect to that instance and uh, on that instance uh, you go to security oh sorry uh, properties of your connection and go to connections there uh, be sure uh, allow remote connections to this server is checked okay and one more thing to do is to uh, set up uh, our firewall okay control panel system and security windows firewall and under advanced settings we would add a new inbound rule new rule we are going to open a port it is TCP port and we gave 65,000 as port number allow the connection that's true and uh, we are going to apply to all these three scopes for now and we are going to name it something like SQL Server Express connection ok and finish so we edit the uh, allowance for uh, firewall ok we are done here so switch to our computer now if we test the uh, connection it would uh, fail again because uh, although we have set the port there and uh, gave a port number we didn't do anything uh, here uh, that is saying that it should use that port number and here how we do that after uh, machine name or IP number put a comma and that the port number 
Okay. Now let's try again. And test connection success. And we should also see a track database here when we do. Yeah, we do. Okay. We, our test success, so we can go to our SQL and change the database location now. It is currently native. Let's click SQL Server next. And we would supply the same information here TCP, IP, TCP, semicolon, the IP number or machine name. comma port number slash name and we are going to connect with username uh, and password here so we select SQL server authentication our user name was Akutrack password all lowercase Akutrack and database Acutrack we test the connection connection succeeds so we say we close the form now exit AcuSQL and restart As you can see, our warning has gone because we are using the SQL Server uh, database now. Just to verify that we are using uh, that uh, AcuSQL, let's go to our server computer, launch AcuSQL there. and do something here for example go to students and I will edit this student and write something like this to phone notes save okay we edit the first uh, student phone note And switch to other our computer. SQL. Let's open student form. First student has the, that change. Okay. That is all we need to do to connect to server from a client computer. Thank you for listening.